Hey, what's up, hello guys? Long time no see, it's Mika, aka Mika Reads. If you're new here, welcome to my channel, and if you're returning, welcome back. I know it's been a while since I posted, and I sincerely apologize. I was busy with school, finals, work, literally working nine hours a day, guys. Like, it's insane. But anyways, it is now June 30th, and I figured better late than never, I'm going to be doing my April-May reading wrap-up. So the only reason I don't say June is because, unfortunately, I've not been able to finish a single book this month. With working nine hours a day, school, traveling, I just have had not a lot of time to read. I'm almost done with the tandem read for Throne of Glass, so that will probably be in my July reading wrap-up, but that's the majority of what I've been reading this month. Anyways, I figured I would do my April May reading wrap up because as you can see I read a bunch of books. Not gonna lie, everything from like maybe here down is like April and then these three are May. But that's besides the point, we're gonna go ahead and get into it. So first off, we're obviously gonna start off with April and I did read a lot of like series this month or a lot of the books are gonna be from a series so it shouldn't take too long to talk about because I'll probably summarize the series as a whole. Just gonna preface that now. So the first two books that I want to talk about cause a lot of controversy whenever I talk about them, but it is Light Lark and Night Bay by Alex Astor. And I'm going to be honest, like my totally unfiltered review on these two books, what the hell? Like, sorry, I caught myself there, but it's just so good. I remember like screaming, like I was like sending snaps to my friend who read this book, like, oh my god what was this ending when this happened and this happened i was like jaw on the floor like this book is actually really good i know a lot of people don't like it because to be honest i don't even know why i personally think that you guys should give this book a shot because i absolutely love this book i pre-ordered the book number three which comes out i believe in either october or november which is sky shade and i am so excited i physically cannot choose between the two love interests in these books i can't I really hope it's a why choose trope because I cannot pick this book or these or this series is just that good. So starting off with Light Lark and I guess like a little description of the book. Um, every hundred years I believe, yeah, every hundred years Light Lark appears in an island and like all of the rulers from like the different I guess realms have to come and compete to break their curses because each realm does have a curse. And so it features around the heir of the wildling realm, which is Isla Crown, and it's featuring her, and like this is her first time going to the games, and their curse, the wildling curse, is they are forced to like kill anyone that they love, and they can only survive off human hearts or animal hearts. But um, things get interesting because, you know, she's going to the games, and there's a mysterious guy named Grimm, there's the King of Light Lark, also known as Oro, and... Um, it's just so good. I ugh, what I would give to read this series for the first time again. This series was a five out of five. First of all, I'm gonna preface that right now, and I think that you guys should give these books a shot. Like I said, I know it's a lot of controversy, but if you are on the fence about reading the series, you should do it. Okay, so moving on to the second series that I finished this month or April, um, is the Shatter Me series. Ah! So. As we all probably seen off like my Insta and everything, I absolutely loved the Shadow Me series. Like Aaron Warner, number one book boyfriend besides like Zayn and Ryerson and Reason, but I absolutely love Aaron Warner guys. You my little Shadow Me area is right over here. It's currently like empty because I'm holding all the books, but ooh. Ooh absolutely loved the series and I gotta say that my favorite out of all the books is probably gonna be book three which is ignite me and uh, I'm pretty sure that's like a lot of people's favorites but it's mine it's it's definitely mine so just like the light like series I know that shatter me gets a lot of controversy people say like they couldn't get through the first book they couldn't do the writing style they couldn't just you just couldn't read it they didn't like it and personally like I said in my March reading wrap up video I did read Shatter Me back in March um the only reason I didn't continue to the next books is because I wanted to finish Light Lake so I finished those two books before going into Shatter Me so similar to what I said in the March reading wrap up about Shatter Me is that the author does put a warning note saying like you know the might be a lot of like repetitiveness and that the changing in the writing style was going to occur as the series goes on because it's meant to be like a visual representation of the main character's mind aka Juliet's mind and that did put me off 
um, in the beginning of Shout Me, like I said in that video. Um, like, I thought, oh my god, like, I am I going to be able to do it? But then you just get halfway through and it's so good. And that's what happens with the rest of the books. Like, the second book, Unravel Me, was so good. Like, a lot more action is happening. There's a lot more happening to the storyline. Things are getting revealed. And then we get into book three, which is, like, jaw-dropping. Like, book three was so good. It... It was it was insane like the ending everything that happens the chemistry and then of course we get to like restore me defy me those two were were like weren't my favorites I think I might have given one 4.5 if not by the way like I said the whole series is a five um I think I might have given one 4.5 I'm not too sure just because like those two books like there was a lot that was happening but it seemed a little like slow for me like I wanted I wanted more and then we get into like the last two books or sorry the last book which is imagine me and jaw on the floor I was shocked I cried a lot in that book with everything that's happening because like with the way with the writing styles is um, starting in book three which is ignite me you start to get different point of views so you get point of views from both Aaron and Juliet and then going into the rest of the books you also get point of views from Kenji um, just seeing the different point of views from all the different characters, how the writing is, it makes you form these like emotional attachments to these characters. So like whenever something happened, I was like feeling for them. Like I thought I was in this book, like experience everything with them. So when I finished the series, I was really sad because it felt like I was no longer a part of the world. It's just her writing style is I know that's not like the best description, but I like words just cannot describe how much I love this series like it's so good that you need to give it a chance like I said I know this one has some controversy but just trust me on this like if, if you don't like it you can come back and attack me later but as of for right now I think that you guys should give this series a chance because it it blew my mind so going into the last two books that I read for the month of April if you guys can already tell um my thorn of glass shelf is kind of missing some books and it is because I read Cry of Midnight and Assassin's Blade so I loved these books as we can tell from my little representing like my little Terrison shirt I love the Throne of Glass series I'm currently reading the tandem read and I'm hooked Throne of Glass is slowly becoming one of my favorite series like Akatar will always have a special place in my heart you know I have my little Akatar tattoo there and everything but I genuinely think I like Throne of Glass more and the only reason I say that is because there's definitely a lot more world building and like action in these books. Like don't get me wrong there was a lot of that in Avatar and it was more touched on like the more like fey aspect but what I really liked about Throne of Glass is just like the adventure, the storytelling and what's happening. Um, as we get into the fourth and fifth books I believe Air of Fire and Queen of Shadows you start to get different point of views. Um, Assassin's Blade and Crown of Midnight are only going to be in the main person's point of view that we've been seeing which is Selena Sardorthian. Sorry if I said her name wrong, still unsure on how I should say it, but <sighs> buckle up. Like if you are going to read the series, buckle up. There are a lot of things where I thought I predicted something and then something else happened and then another thing happened and I was just like I don't want to spoil the book and I was currently filming a read through a glass video along with me. Still don't know if I'm going to post it. Um, I have taken footage of like me reading these books, but I do read these books at like inconvenient times, like at the gym, in the bath, when I'm traveling, at school, so it's hard to film every single part of it, but I do kind of give recaps on what happens without spoiling it, if you guys were interested. Don't know if I'm going to post it, let me know if you want to see it or not. But, going back into Crown of Midnight and Assassin's Blade, um, I followed the order of publishing. I know some people read Assassin's Blade first before they read the series, but I wanted to go in publishing order and I'm glad that I did because what you learn in Assassin's Blade, as I went on to the next book, which was Air Fire and then Queen of Shadows, you see references that were made in this book and I was like, oh my god, like I just read about this, like I knew this, I know what this is. And that was just really nice. If you want to read it first, you can go ahead, but you are probably going to have to try and remember characters that do get introduced in this book. But nonetheless, get tissues because this, this is going to rip your heart out and it's going to stomp on it, it's going to crumple it. Sarah J Mass pay for my therapy because holy shit like I knew what was happening I knew how the ending of the book was gonna happen if you do read the first and second book first so I was a little prepared but it still hurt like that's all I will say this book 
hurt. But all the different stories in this book, amazing. Going into Crown of Midnight, this book also hurt. Halfway through, pain. And I also got one of the biggest things in this book spoiled to me because if you guys follow my bookstagram, I do gym based workouts or like book themed workouts for the gym. And I was doing a Selena workout and I wanted to make sure I knew how to spell her last name right. And of course, I looked it up and I got spoiled something. Like, I got thrown a glass spoiler that happens at the end of this book. So, fair warning if you're gonna read the Throne of Glass series, do not look up anything. Do not, nope, just stop right there. No no absolutely not because you will get spoiled and still i was shocked like reading that ending i was still a little shocked and it was crazy like i knew it was coming but this book just plays with your emotions like i'm emotionally attached to like all the characters in this book like even yesterday when i was reading the tandem read whenever something was happening to one character and it was like an emotional moment my eyes were like tearing up so and i think sorry i know i'm having a hard time talking right now it's been a while since I filmed, but I think starting with this book is when I really started to like get really attached to the characters and I was like, you know, Throne of Glass, 10 out of 10, the series as a whole. Crowd of Midnight was good. Um, I do want to say that it is a lot more slower paced than the rest of the books. There, Don't get me wrong, there's still a bunch that happens. But compared to the other books, it will build up if you are worried about that. So going into my May TBR, I did take a little break from the Throne of Glass series at first. Um, and that is because King of Slap came out. And if you know me, I love Anna Huang's books. And I'm very fortunate enough to be one of the Anna Huang um, influencers. So I'm in the little Facebook group and everything. And I... When this book came out, I had to read it. Like, I pre-ordered it. I got the little exclusive edition everything. Added it to my little pile over here. But because I live in Hawaii, I did not get this the day it came out. So I just read it on the Kindle because her books are available on Kindle Unlimited. And I, as soon as I got up on May 7th, I believe, I just opened it. I opened it on my Kindle and I was like, yes, I get to read this. Oh, no, not May 7th, sorry. April 30th. April 30th, I put it up on my Kindle and I started reading. I loved this book. I love a lot of Anna Huang's books. Um, I have favorites, Twisted Love, King of Wrath, but King of Sloth, it was very different. I will say that I do feel like the romance in this book was kind of put on the back burner and it focused more on like the other, the main characters' lives and what's happening in the story versus like their romance. And it was, it's a little like, mm, you know kind of like just reading to get it through it's definitely probably not my most favorite of the books but it was still really good like there's a lot of banter in this there's a lot of like rom-com silly like goofiness and i that's what i really love in the book i love banter i love rom-coms so this book it was good um i do want to say that like i said in the plot it was mainly the main character's lives versus romance um, that did kind of turn me off a little bit. I don't know if I rated this a 4.5 or a 5, but just know that it is good. So if you are thinking of starting the Anna Huang series, you should definitely read the first books in the King of Sin series. And if you didn't read the Twisted series first, to go ahead and read that because all of the books are interconnected. You will see things and you will see the characters from the previous books appear as well as like life updates that happens to them so if you do like read it out of order you might get spoiled a lot so i do recommend reading the other books first but nonetheless king of sloth you should read it so going into the last two books of my may tbr we have air of fire and queen of shadows and these are some fat books if you guys cannot tell and when i tell you that i read air of fire in about like a day maybe a little less than a day no, maybe a little over a day, and I read Queen of Shadows in two days. Yeah. After um my finals and everything, I was packed. I made like a 50-page study guide for my kinesiology final, my sports and preventative of injuries, meaning that I had to know like all the anatomy and all the different injuries to the different parts of the anatomy. Anyways, um, I didn't read for a long time. Like I read King of Sloth first week of May and then I read this like May 27th and then this one May 28th. I did not have time to read and so when I was on vacation and I found a moment of time, I wasn't going to let it to waste. 
And that is the only reason I read this in a day and this one in two days. Because I knew I was going to have a lot of time. As we can tell, since I don't have any books for June. So, I made the most of it and I read it. And when I tell you that I cried. There was a lot. There was a lot that happens in Air Fire and Queen of Shadows. A lot of, like, emotional, like, scenes and, like, characters, things that happen. And, like I said, I formed, like, an emotional attachment to these characters. So when these things were happening, I felt like I was there with them. It felt like it was happening to me, and I cried. But the world building and the adventure, the plot, everything just gets so much better in these books. Air Fire, you get introduced to two new characters who I really, really, really love, and I heard a lot about, so I was excited to see them. You hear a lot about them in Air of Fire, as well as Queen of Shadows. So these two books, I want to say, is when the story really picks up, because you get to meet a few new characters. Oh, sorry, I just dropped my bookmark. You get to meet a few new, like, key characters in the books that will continue to be there throughout the story. And... <sighs> I'm just speechless like I love the Zona Glass series and I don't know what else to say about it like the plot it was good the main character it was good the character development the plot development everything just gets so much better and it's hard to talk about these books without spoiling it because there's a lot of points I could make on things I just don't want to spoil it for you guys if you haven't read it so this review is gonna be kind of bland I'll probably do a whole like my thoughts on Throne of Glass book series um after I finish the series if you guys did like read it and want to hear like my spoiler thoughts just go ahead and check that out but until then just take that bland review that a lot happens um, it definitely starts to get a little more spicy in Queen of Shadows, I believe. So it's not a lot of spice. It's definitely more PG until we get to Queen of Shadows. And when I say the spice is good, the spice is good. But nonetheless, these books were both fives for me. Like, I, I bought a Terrison shirt after <laughs> reading this book. It's just so good. And especially, like, the events that happened in Queen of Shadows. Like, the ending of Queen of Shadows... Like, last maybe 50, 100 pages, I was just, like, mouth dropped. So much happens, so much changes, and it's crazy. It's just insane. The fact that Sarah J. Mass wrote all of this, like, amazes me because this is an incredible story. And the only thing that I, I'm mad about is that I didn't read this book series sooner. Like, I had a friend in high school who always talked about this series, that it was, like, her favorite series in the world, but I wasn't really, like, a book person anymore like I read a lot in middle school but like high school was more like sports for me I had to be focused on gymnastics and she still always talked about how good it was and I was like yeah uh-huh and then now that I'm reading it I realized just how good it is and that's my only regret is that I did start this series sooner well with that said that kind of wraps up my whole little April May reading wrap up I do wish I got to do an actual June one but I didn't get to finish any books, and I doubt I'm going to finish the tandem read tonight. Um, even if I do, I'll probably still include that one in July, but, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm also glad to just be back in posting and in booktube in the gym. I did really have, like, a big slump in my life with just finals and work and everything. I was reaching burnout, didn't want to do anything, didn't have time for the gym, didn't want to read, but... I finally feel like I'm getting back into motion of things again, like I'm filming a booktube video, um, I'm working on in the gym consistently, I'm dieting, I'm reading more, it makes me really happy and I hope that you guys are glad to have me back too because I'm just happy being back in booktube and I can't wait to keep on making videos for you guys and just growing along with all of you, giving my book reviews as well as like exploring new content. But yeah, just remember if you guys liked today's video, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys next video. Bye!